So on the consensus part, I've just been noodling a little bit, not too much on um, this uh, new paper out on uh, proof of sequential work. Um, and trying to think um, about how to, if there's any way to use that um, to squeeze some more security properties um, out of our sharding solutions. Um, I also I also realized recently that that there might be a kind of continuity constraint um, on our uh, single um, uh, on our on our single transition for our machine, and so we we might have a yeah I'm I'm, I'm wondering if there's a a multi step continuity constraint uh, that's uh, Um, uh, that that would be available that would enable us to um, even to to prove the transitions. A sequence of transitions are um, uh, faithful to the execution model um, without necessarily having to um, know all the details. Uh, it's sort of like having a, a not invariant. Um, so the the not invariant um, isn't it, you can't necessarily recover the not from the not invariant, um, but it still allows you to detect um, uh, various properties of knots. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about whether or not we can have a similar kind of thing. Uh, which would allow us to get uh, more security properties out of our uh, transitions. Um, and this has to do with the sharding um, that uh, right now we've got this, uh, we've ended up with this tree of lattices model, which is a bit more um, involved than I would like. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I've just been looking at how to how to reduce the complexity of that structure um, without having to, you know, lower the uh, lower the speed um, that uh, uh, you know. In other words, you know, keep it uh, more scalable, uh, so we don't have to have quite so much observation in order to guarantee the um, security of the transition function. Yeah, so that's uh, one thing I've been working on. And the other thing I started to take a little bit more seriously now that we've got uh, um, the, all the instructions coded up is uh, this um, uh, hardware model for the row calculus. Um, I'm, no, I'm not as enthusiastic about the design right now as I was before because we hit a couple of roadblocks with the uh, clash um, hard, um, hardware package that we're using that makes it uh, next to impossible to get um, a, um, a parallel data lines. In, uh, you know, so it's like uh, we can't uh, we can't get a bunch of things reading memory all at once. Uh, uh, you know, like even if the memory is kind of chunked into different uh, parallel chunks. Uh, so that was, uh, uh, but but still, um, the thing will accelerate the performance uh, uh, quite a bit. So. Anyway, that's my update. Cool. Uh, Michael. Greg, do you want to go a little bit more in depth on the proof of sequential work that you mentioned yeah, so at the very beginning? Yeah, so Nash sent me this paper. Apparently, there's a paper that's come out recently that uh, essentially makes um, proof of work a little bit more sustainable. Um, and uh, so I was, uh, it, it makes it makes it um, possible not have to to do quite so much uh, uh, busy work in order to. Um, uh, in order to, you know, um, uh, uh, get the security property. Um, so the idea so, is that 
you do a little bit of work on top of someone else's and so that it's still hard to rewrite history because you'd have to be you know doing the whole thing yourself whereas other people are just doing little bits on top of each other that's that's sort of the idea yeah something like that yeah exactly so um but anyway i'm not sure if it generalizes to our situation so i've just been kind of thinking about it a little bit um but yeah that's uh that's one um and I, I'm, I'm wondering if we can compose that to get some, uh, with our solution, to get some security properties. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I can send you the paper if you're interested. Yeah, that, that, that'd be cool. I, I would scroll through it. Sure, for sure. What's going on there? Cool. Uh, what's up with you? Um, see so i i've been focusing on coding some more of the casper modules in in the r chain code base so we're working towards getting actual rolling terms in our blocks and um doing some more of the parts of the consensus that are important so like right now we have you know, the module that does the fork trace rule and the module that does the safety and um, they don't really talk to each other a whole lot. And the idea of validator identity is still a little bit wishy-washy. So just sort of tightening up all of that stuff, getting it to spec as per Vlad's uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost paper with the inclusive ghost rule as opposed to the uh, uh, strictly greedy one. Mm -hmm. um, so, so nothing really on, on, on the research side, but we are definitely making progress in terms of implementation, which is good. Cool. Cool. That's good. And uh, are you, are you guys at the point where you have rolling terms in the blocks? Kind of. The short yeah. answer is yes, but <laughs> there, there's a whole bunch of asterisks next to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what's, one, what's one big asterisk? <laughs> well, so right now it relies very heavily on the fact that there exists exactly one Rolang interpreter in the world. <laughs> so we're currently not actually logging the execution trace and just using the fact that same inputs give you same outputs because there's all nodes are using the same interpreter. Um, so, so we still have to plug in the execution logging and include that in the blocks. OK, OK. Um, and of course, there, there, there will be optimizations on that that we also haven't really thought all the way through and exactly how those should work, right? Because the, the goal that you've mentioned before is the using shorter propositions to encode properties of the trace as opposed to the trace explicitly, but we'll, we'll probably start with an explicit trace and then move away from it over time. Cool. Cool. That, that sounds, that sounds awesome. Um, other, other things include, uh, right now the way the history and rollback works is pretty hacky. So, the Rolang tuple space is backed by LMDB, which has um, in memory and on disk components. And so, right. what you can do is copy the disk components to other places in order to snapshot your database in, in a very crude way. And so, that's currently what's happening. But um, in the future, we will have a much more sophisticated try type setup. And um, it should be a lot more efficient as, as a result of that as well. Like right now, it's very, very slow. Basically, what we have is a working demo that one could show to people, but all of the details are wrong. <laughs> and we'll be yeah. next <laughs> Well, that's good. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's agile development. <laughs> end, end to end and refine, end to end and refine. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's nice. Uh, no, I've, I've really been very pleased with all of that. That's cool. Uh, and I understand Kent is, uh, I don't think he's back next week, but week after, something like that. Uh, let's see, what have I got in my calendar here? He is not back, or he, he's back at the end of next week. Yeah, so, that's what I, yeah, yeah, so he'll he'll be 
fully back the week after. Yep, that's right. Sweet, sweet. Well, I mean, since there's only two of us today, I don't mind yielding the time back. I, I feel like I'm apprised of what you guys are up to. And I'll, 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 oh, hey, Jim, did you want to say something? Yeah, I had a brain fart. Uh, I, I guess we, uh, we were talking about mutation uh, and the reluctance to accept it. And, you know, that led me back to the, you know, the reversibility aspect and undoing operations and uh, Landor's principle. Um, and how, you know, in a logical system, uh, go from state A to state B, back to state A again, nothing happened. But when we have a, a finite state representation of expressible logic infinitely, um, uh, a, a change in state can be very costly in terms of undo operations. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it seemed to me that approaching Landau's limit uh, is a mechanism uh, to minimize cost and, uh, and achieve consensus as well. Perhaps hmm. <laughs> help help achieve consensus. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. It's almost a, it's almost a proof of work type of thing, um, but in undecidable cases, you still have to um, use something else. Yeah. Uh, can you send a link? I'm not sure. I know this uh, this construction. Um, uh, I can link you to Landau's principle. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, you know, maybe I, I, I realize, I guess it's a lot to take. Uh, uh, I don't know of any one else. I did search for, uh, stuff and I didn't find anything. Okay. Um, I can, um. Uh, maybe make it a little bit clearer and uh yeah or if you want to do a write-up and share it that's also yeah. cool yeah that's what i was thinking okay um yeah i um i i'm i just i don't have enough to piece together the construction well it, it's more logical in the sense that you know if it, uh the undoes cost you, and if you minimize that cost in deciding uh, uh, which branches to follow, um, we um, well, I guess I already said that. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! I, I absolutely see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, this is closely re related to um, uh, what I was looking at with um, Oleg's zipper thing. So, yeah, so I was, I, I came up with a solution uh, to um, the, uh, an immutable approach to the, the object state for the Rosette machine. Um, that involves um, Oleg's zipper. Um, the, the problem is that you're storing all these continuations and the zippers have uh, potentially have to bounce them back, back and forth all around the graph. Um, and so this is literally going to be orders of magnitude slower than in-place updates, like by a lot. You know, it's just like, it's going to be so noticeable. Um, yeah. It, if there were, if there was, like, you know, the 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 others, the other approach would not be using the delimited continuations, but to use the standard, you know, UA style zipper. But um, there again, the the multi cursor solution is still a bit of a science project. Like, I haven't yeah. seen, I haven't I'm, seen. I'm thinking of the, you know, the first order, you know, simple solution. 
okay, uh, uh, we know uh, uh, we know what everything cost already, and uh, we can uh, we know the uh, so we know the cost of undoing it locally, just itself. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, I mean the the, the uh, uh, so I don't know how useful that is, but. Uh, It seemed like something that would uh, 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 that would uh, certainly not hit Landau's limit, but get a little bit closer to it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, Yeah, the the cost knowing the cost though is an information losing process, right? It doesn't allow you to recover the the um, the actual computational step, you know, especially if there are multiple computational steps that all have the same cost. Um, so, so, uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not following your. Yeah, I'm just talking. I'm, I'm just talking about the the cost of. Taking another path, the cost of undoing yeah. the operation. Okay, I'm not talking about the cost of doing it. <laughs> I'm saying that that uh, systematically minimizing our undoes is going to save us. Hmm. Okay. All right. And, That's interesting. You no, know, and and if you're choosing between State A and state B alternatives, they each have a cost of undoing. And they have the basis for deciding between them. You okay. Do the one that you undo the one that costs least undo. <laughs> and I, I see. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. No, this is more of a consensus style algorithm than it is. Okay. So, so maybe what you're saying is. Uh, okay, I, 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 yeah, it's, I think I understand. Uh, it's something you think, no, I mean, it's, it's sort of, uh, uh, yeah, 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 I, yeah, I, I, I like this, I, I like this line of thinking, it's kind of interesting, actually. Um, yeah oh but when it gets mixed with economics it's not necessarily following the principle anymore because you can't get these discontinuous jumps because somebody is willing to pay for it huh well what i'm what i'm suggesting is that um uh, if there, uh, in the case where one branch is clearly cheaper to undo than the other, that it doesn't go for a vote. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, all right. Well, let me let you know, me. Yeah, well, some, some heuristic there where you can you know. Uh, 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 use both factors, uh, you know, fifty percent or something. The bets and the and the uh, the work. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'll, I'll, let me let, let me noodle on this. This is an interesting thought. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good. Good. Good idea. Um. um Cool. Uh, are, are there any other updates that we wanted to uh, discuss? Um, no appearance from Vlad. No appearance from Nate. I think we're we're probably all good today. Then. All right. Cool. Thanks so much. All right, later, guys. Yeah, ciao. Thank you. Bye bye.